The universe is a pretty weird place. Its very existence not only boggles the mind, but the sheer scale of it does as well. On top of this, it's evident that the universe is still expanding, and even weirder, it doesn't expand at a linear rate. I'll explain what that means in a bit, but for now, let's prepare ourselves for deciphering the meaning of this infamous photo, the map of the observable universe. One of the strangest things about the sheer scale of the universe is just how stupidly slow the speed of light is compared to it. Even the closest star from our sun is over four years away when traveling at such a speed. But because time doesn't pass for light on its journey, the information is preserved until being observed. So when we see the light that does come from such stars, we are seeing it as it was a certain time in the past. That means the further away something is observed, the longer it's been since light left that object. This notion can lead to an interesting proposition. What if we look very, very far away? What if we look for an object, then look past that? And when we find another object, we also look past that. As we look further into space, we are seeing further and further into the past of the universe, closer and closer to its beginning. So astronomers did just that. They kept looking until they couldn't look any further. Then eventually they found the same thing wherever they looked. They found the proverbial edge of the universe. It's not a very common name, but this is sometimes referred to as the wall, a phenomenon occurring no matter where you look in the night sky. An impassable barrier that prevents you from peering further into space or earlier in time. The light coming off the wall is what is known as cosmic microwave background radiation and is what is mapped here. These colors represent temperature. Red is warmer and blue is cooler, but we're talking on a scale of milli-degrees. If you had an imprecise thermometer, it would all look 2.725 Kelvin. But this light tells us more than just the temperature of our universe or what was happening a long, long time ago. Early in the life of the universe, a mere 370,000 years after its birth, a great event occurred in an epoch called recombination. At this point, the universe had cooled down enough to allow electrons and protons to merge and form the very first atoms of helium. Prior to this, the heat of the universe was too intense, the energy held by individual electrons and protons was too great to allow them to remain bound to one another. This hot state, when electrons are not bound to protons, is what we call a plasma, like our sun. Because the electrons are not bound to an atom, they can freely scatter and interact with light. This means no light can travel in a straight line, thus no light could possibly pass through to form a meaningful image. What we do see then is the scattering and abundant release of light from this hot plasma. Kind of as if the wall was the surface of a star. And it's this ancient plasma that is creating what we call cosmic microwave background radiation. Now this may arise a few additional questions one may ask. So does this mean there is an edge to the universe? And are we, in a sense, inside a giant star? And if the light really does come from plasma, something we find in stars, why is it so weak? The first answer is that this is of course not the edge of the universe, and we can easily understand this visually. During the epoch of recombination, almost all matter in the entire universe condensed into helium at more or less the same time period. Now this process took a couple thousand years, but on the universal timescale, it was like a snap of the fingers. To simplify our visualization, we'll pretend it does indeed happen this fast. Now if we imagine ourselves as some omnipotent observer who can observe all of the universe at the same time, then the epoch of recombination would look like this. One moment in opaque plasma, the next transparent gas. However, for an observer within the universe, their observations are reliant on light, and light is very slow. So although the entire universe at roughly the same time became transparent, our observer would only receive this information as an expanding sphere that moved away from them at light speed. Wherever they looked, they would see ancient plasma that no longer existed, just like how we see ancient stars that also no longer exist. Now here's where the truly bizarre implications begin. 
If we are seeing ancient plasma, well, we know that plasma is really hot. In the conditions of the early universe, electrons and protons would not have condensed until around 3000 Kelvin. So the light emitted from this plasma should be in the visible spectrum. Yet, as the name suggests, it's microwave light. The peak wavelength from a 3000 Kelvin object should be 966 nanometers. We'll round it up to one micrometer. Yet the observed peak for cosmic background radiation is one millimeter. That means this light has been stretched out over a thousand times its length. And this is really strange. This stretching of our cosmic radiation is a result from spatial expansion. But this is a bit odd because, as far as we can tell, the solar system has always been about this big. If expansion stretched out our light a thousand times over 13.7 billion years, then our solar system should have been about 75 times smaller a billion years ago. But by observing how light coming from different distances has been affected by the universe it's passed through on its journey, we can observe that the universe does not expand linearly. It expands faster the further two points in space get from one another. On small scales like solar systems and galaxies, this expansion isn't really noticeable. But at immense distances, like that between far and even further galaxies, things begin moving away from each other, faster and faster, like the inverse of gravity. Now the reasoning of this, we believe, has to do with the nature of dark energy, an unknown, relatively recent phenomenon that is not the subject of today's video. But the results are truly strange. Since the universe is indeed expanding, the question now is how fast, and what does that look like? For this we refer to Hubble's constant. This is a factor describing the rate at which two points in space move away from each other based on their distance. It evaluates to roughly 70 kilometers per second every megaparsec between the two points. This value hasn't reached consensus in the scientific community though. It wavers from roughly 67 to 72 kilometers per second, depending on how you measure it. So we still have more to learn. But if it is correct, then two points one megaparsec away are expanding from each other at a speed of 70 kilometers per second, and two points 100 megaparsecs away are expanding from each other at 7,000 kilometers per second. A megaparsec is equal to 3.26 million light years. For comparison, Andromeda, our nearest galaxy, is 0.77 megaparsecs away, so there's not too much expansion happening nearby. But even a megaparsec away, objects only move 70 kilometers a second. It sounds very fast, but that's only roughly two and a third times faster than the Earth's orbit around the Sun. And remember, space is very, very large. Each megaparsec of distance creates a speed of less than a quarter of a per meal of the speed of light. An object would need to be over 4.2 billion parsecs, or 13.9 billion light years away, before they become invisible forever. And that's just crazy far away. So anything within even a few hundred megaparsecs will be sticking around in our night sky for a pretty long time, albeit a bit redder in the future.